Are you looking to invest like the professionals without the buyer's agent price tag? Diva helps you save time and money by filtering out 99% of markets within Australia to give you the top 1% of Australia's suburbs set for strong returns. The do-it-yourself buyer's agency save you thousands on buyer's agent fees and months on courses. Instead, for a fraction of the price, you can search the highest performing markets, target the right property for your investment goals and be guided through the purchase process. Diva, the ultimate tool for the everyday investor. Sign up at www.diva.com.au to put the power back in your hands. That's www.diyba.com.au. This is a Momentum Media production. Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show, the podcast by investors for investors. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of day you are listening. Welcome back to a brand new episode of the Smart Property Investment Show. It's Grace Ormsby here and I'm joined in studio by my colleague, Kyle Robbins. Kyle, welcome back to the show. It's been a little while. It has. It's been a while. Thanks for having me back on. You have had a holiday in the meantime, which was great. Um, You're back now. It's, I guess, just to timestamp this for everyone, it's Are You OK Day, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But in Sydney, there's also a lot of backburning going on, so it's a very smoky day out there. Yep. Our office overlooks Sydney Harbour, and we can barely see the water. That's how much smoke is out there, so no good. Our condolences to everyone else who is dealing with that at the moment. But as I said just before, 14th of September does mark Are You OK Day, and it is a day that I wouldn't feel right. If we did not address as a team, there are so many people out there who may be struggling and we don't even know about it. So not only have we been having the conversation with our colleagues here in the office, but just putting that word out there of the importance of of a day like today. For sure. I think it's such an important initiative. I think over the last couple of years, I think looking after mental health has been, you know, become a massive emphasis in society. So days like today are, you know, they just reaffirm that that stance and that sort of momentum to make sure everything upstairs is going well and making sure everything upstairs for those around you is going well as well. Take the time to check in with people, whether it's colleagues, whether it's family, whether it's friends, whether it's someone you haven't even talked to in a while. I know a big thing this year is, you know, it can be actually scary to approach that question with people and are you okay day in itself that the organisation behind them has a lot of resources online with how you can actually be tooled effectively and and equipped to be able to have those conversations, making sure you ask in in an appropriate environment as well. That's obviously very important. Just knowing that you're in a good time, like don't, don't expect the conversation to be a 30 second one. It might be but it may not be. So um, approach those conversations carefully, but make sure you do approach them, not just today, but every day. That's my request to you all out there, um, wherever you're listening, whatever day you're listening to this on, go out and and check on those people around you because there are a lot of people, as we've known, um, that have done it tough over the last little while and, and we need to be having these conversations. So please do. We're going to take a quick break there before we come back with some editorial updates. There's obviously a lot going on in the real estate and property space. See you on the other side. Crush the burden of rising mortgage repayments. We understand that managing your finances can be overwhelming, especially as interest rates continue to rise. With access to 70 plus lenders, our team of specialised brokers will find the best rates for your specific needs. Count on us to secure a lower rate swiftly, giving you the confidence you deserve. Book an appointment with one of our experts today to protect your financial well-being and secure your future. Call us now at 02 8866 or visit our website at finney.com.au. Welcome back to this episode. We are about to unpack some of the biggest things that have been going on in the editorial world at the moment. I know that we're actually coming off the back of a pretty recent editorial update, but there has just been so much going on. September is obviously spring selling season, usually a very busy time for the property and real estate sectors, but this year has felt even busier than usual, Kyle. Yeah, it feels like sort of all this pent-up sales activity over the, I guess, the last 18 months while rates have risen 
is just now being released. I was just on the auction preview for this coming weekend and it, it's set to be Australia's second busiest week of the year. So that's some indicator of how how spring has sprung. And normally, you know, we do see this uptick in activity at this time of year and it, it's great that it's happening. Obviously, it's been a pretty quiet period. A lot of a lot of lack of supply has been you know, talked about in the ecosystem. And and this year, obviously, we've got the magnification coming from what's going on in the political sphere as well. We've just seen this week that the Greens have um, finally agreed to give their support to the Housing Australia Future Fund to secure that passage through Parliament. We were looking at the potential. I, I think Everyone thought it was quite unlikely, but there was the potential for a double dissolution, a, a potential um, election off the back end of the year if it did not get support the second time it was brought through Parliament. And the stalemate has finally finished, Kyle. Yes, we have liftoff, as the Real Estate Institute of Australia put it, and don't we have liftoff. It didn't take much for the Labor to get the Greens on board. It just took an extra $1 billion committed to social and affordable just, housing. Just a little bit. Just a cheeky one bill, and that's not even included in the half. That's a completely separate deal that Labor have negotiated with, I guess, the Greens, but... I think it's good for everyone. I think uh, people are glad that we don't have to go back to the polls. No one really enjoys a democracy sausage as much as they say, let's be honest. But yeah, uh, finally, it's uh, been a long, I want to say six months. Well, really, if you want to take it back, it we've been talking about it for even longer, given that it was a, a central uh, election, election promise, yeah. promise of Anthony Albanese's party going into that last election. So we've been hearing about it for a long time, and I think it was becoming an uncomfortably long period, given how acute Australia's housing crisis has become and how acute it's going to stay for a long time. Um, there's obviously been a lot of commentary around about None of these things can be addressed overnight, especially when you're talking about housing supply against a backdrop of construction companies going bust, rising costs of construction, locked up land supply needing Mm -hmm. to go through a lot of checks and procedures to to be released. So we're going to be hearing about this for a long time still to come, but obviously, you know, some great news coming out this week that that is to go ahead. Obviously, the passage still needs to go back to the House of Representatives before it can be become a bill and be passed into law. And then we will obviously see the eventual listing on the ASX of the Housing Australia Future Fund, that $10 billion bit of funding. Yeah. Um, and I mean, that in itself is going, there's a lot of things that will need to go on behind the scenes before that is the case. But obviously it's always a great thing to see more money pushed towards social and affordable housing. There are a lot of people doing it tough at the moment and and anything that can take the pressure off that supply issue is much needed and, and will go back towards c- sort of correcting the property market and some of those issues we've been seeing recently. For sure. Any supply is welcome. It it obviously won't be too much of a silver bullet, but I think everything that's going wrong, or not going wrong, but everything that is seen as problematic in the current housing market, you know, rising rents, plummeting vacancy rates, we touch on it later, but housing affordability is just getting worse and worse. That all sort of comes back to supply because, you know, you have more supply of homes on the market, which this deal is trying to do. You have more rental properties, which means you have more vacancies, which means rents then go down. And it's just sort of this spiraling, snowballing effect of, you know, everything ties into supply. So, I think this is a, a right step forward, if even if it's not a cure-all. Mm, and I think the right discussions are being had. You penned a piece today, um, which I don't think it's even gone live yet, has it, the, about regional Australia pushing for an equitable share of the Housing Australia Future yep. Fund um, when that does go live, 30%. Yeah, they're asking for a they want. 30% slice. So I think on face value, it's about $3 billion. And, and they're saying that given the data saying that more and more people want to move regionally, especially young people, a lot of millennials are sort of saying they want to move to regional pockets of Australia and the regional parts of Australia, they just don't have the housing for it. They also linked it to, they have a workforce shortage, so they they don't have enough workers in key sectors. And that also ties back into not being able to, to put them in places to live and, you know, they just don't have enough stock for that. And there are more areas, you know, there are so many regional hubs that are looking for investment and, and are seeing investment in them already, you know, Bathurst, Orange, um, Newcastle, Hunter, Wollongong areas. I mm-hmm. know they're, they're kind of becoming quasi 
They're almost Greater Sydney, yeah. Sydney, but, um, you know, Port Macquarie, Coffs Harbour, that's just New South Wales alone. Even places like Geelong down in Melbourne, Bendigo and Ballarat, they're technically regional, but they're massive cities as well that are undergoing mass development at the moment. And they do deserve a slice of the pie, For sure. to, so to say. That's where people are seeing their futures. So that's going to come into those conversations as well, that lifestyle and affordability piece. And I think it's probably come into greater relief, greater perspective given COVID and what we all went through for a couple of years there. So I always somehow managed to bring the conversation back to COVID. So I apologise for that. But we're going to take another break because there's a few more stories still to unpack on the other side. See you soon. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this very special editorial update. Kyle, we were talking in the break about some other things that are going on, and there's obviously so much going on, but some interesting figures coming out of the Real, Real Estate, Estate Institute of Australia. This which, week. Yeah, so it's a report recently conducted by the Real Estate Institute of Australia that's basically concluded that housing in Australia is at its most unaffordable since 2008. So obviously the global financial crisis was the, the big hit that year. But I think a lot of people, you know, in and around property, but even just the general public knew this without needing someone to say it. But I think having that ratified by such a prominent organisation, I think just sort of spells out the woes that a lot of people are going through. Rates are going up and mortgages are going up Mm. and it's just not getting any easier. And it's timely given what we've seen with the HAS, as we were talking about before the break. Obviously, that is the kind of thing that needs to come in and and action be taken soon. We've also seen CoreLogic come back out and say housing has re-hit that $10 trillion valuation mark. So we're definitely trending back upwards when it comes to property values across the country. We first hit that $10 trillion mark in the middle of the pandemic. So to see us back up there, given the trials and tribulations with and the amount of rate, rate rises we've seen over the last 15 months or so, is pretty incredible. Mm-hmm. I don't use incredibly lightly, not positively or negatively, but you know, to see that happen despite everything else that's going on, it's creating concerns for a lot of people. So it is something that we'll be keeping a close eye on. Obviously it has an impact. We're going to see some of those build to rents coming out soon um, that started to be built during COVID. We're seeing additional measures come in, a lot of extra funding going towards social and affordable housing. And it's just really good to be mindful about what's going on in that space, I think. So Obviously, there's both good and bad news wrapped up within some of that data. So well worth a look. It really does put things into perspective, whether you work within the real estate space or you're just, you know, someone who operates wanting to know what's going on in the property market. It's very useful stuff there. So go check it out. We've got plenty of information on smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. If you want to find out more in other news, um, interesting as well, to see the ethics index released once again. Mm -hmm. Every year we do see this and unfortunately every year we are not surprised. No. And real estate agents this year were voted, uh, yeah, voted I guess is what you'd say, as the least ethical profession in Australia. So they beat out federal politicians and I'm pretty sure directors of foreign companies operating in Australia to the I don't even want to say honour, but to the title. Mm, I mean, it's a tough one, isn't it? We work with so many amazing real estate professionals day in, day out who work to the highest of standards. They they take such care and consideration in their work. And it is very much that thing of, of just public perception, I yep. think, that comes into this and, and seeing people as a whole. Um, obviously, there's been so much work over the years around professionalism of the real estate profession and and the people that are doing amazing things, not only within their own work and their own businesses, but for their communities as well. And we could be talking about them for days and days and days and still this kind of thing will come out. But it did actually talk this year very interestingly, I think, Kyle, around the idea of ethics and where Australians' perceptions of ethics actually are. And I would actually bring up there that, you know, we've seen a lot of stuff in the media lately about big organisations not within the real estate space that have, you know, potentially done the wrong, well, not potentially, have done the wrong thing by not only their staff, but by customers and and the general public. And that doesn't fly. (laughs) That was not, I didn't mean to use a pun there, but we did really, Qantas and Alan Joyce and and what's been going on over there. And um, 
And yes, I think we are facing a lot of ethical dilemmas at this point in time. What kind of behaviour constitutes ethical and ethical behaviour and, and even artificial intelligence? Yeah, there was a big one in there talking about uh, like companies that have products or they have text or anything generated by artificial intelligence, they want disclosure. Just back on the ethics stuff, so did the uh, index did say that the Australian public valued ethics like higher than any point in history and it was largely driven by millennials and Gen Xs. So maybe it's not just so much that there's a lot of unethical activity going on, but it's I think a lot more people are switching on to or not letting such unethical behaviour slide, whereas maybe in past, in years gone by, that might have been the case. So I think it's it's this younger generation that are just sort of, they have their eye on ethics and they, they seem like they're not going to keep Stop watching ethics. Mm, I mean, that's a really good point to make. And and anyone out there that's operating your business, if you want to be targeting or tapping um, those demographics, you you need to be paying attention to what they're paying attention to. So we probably have hit that point post COVID where people aren't going to stand for unethical corporations and companies that aren't doing the right thing by the people and communities that they serve. So. I mean, plenty to come still from that. Um, we'll be unpacking those those stories for a while yet, but I guess it's just a good reminder of, of what it is to be ethical and, and how you should be going about day-to-day life. And especially at this point in time, are you okay day and, and what that means, the kind of things that people are going through that we may not know at, at any point in time. And it brings that back into sharp relief as well. So I would actually like to reiterate those comments made on the outset of the episode about asking the question of, are you okay? There are so many resources out there that you can be accessing if you yourself are struggling and please do access those. Check out online resources Beyond Blue. Are You Okay has a lot of information on their website as well, the Black Dog Institute to name a few. Thank you again for listening into this episode. If you have any questions, editor at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. Subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't already and stay up to date with us for all the latest news across our social media, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Until next time, stay safe and well wherever you are listening from. Bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.